I voice only one concern, and that is that after having had a fantastic session on well-being, you now get 10 minutes on discipline. Uh, not everyone's cup of tea. Can I begin by uh, 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 just acknowledging the presence in the room of other members of uh, the Code Disciplinary Committee, Honourable Paul Heath, Alicia Gartrell and uh, Lindley Wood. Um, I hope I haven't missed anyone else who's here. Uh, I have uh, been given the trigger here, which uh, is not always a good thing for me to get because technology and I don't ordinarily mix well. Um, but I wanted to just introduce my 10 minutes uh, talk, of which I see I now have 9 minutes and 11 seconds remaining. Um, this is fantastic uh, as a reminder. Normally I've had someone sitting behind me with a bell, uh, but this is uh, right up to the uh, moment, or 8.58 uh, minutes. Um, what I wanted to uh, do is just outline the 10 minutes that I've got, the 10-minute story, uh, why have a code, why have a disciplinary committee, and then give you just a bit of an oversight uh, as to how it will work. Let's just take those uh, in sequence. Why a code? Well, we're living in an environment now where I think it's expected that all sectors can do better uh, in their interaction with consumers, their interaction with uh, regulators. Uh, and frankly, social expectations of business have changed very significantly. We heard a great deal about that in terms of the way in which business focuses not just on shareholder return, uh, but on uh, well-being, not just for customers, but also for staff this morning. Uh, and uh, those social expectations uh, are translated into uh, what has been the oft-talked-about social license for operation, uh, and uh, that has informed, to a large extent, the development of uh, a social infrastructure for uh, business. Uh, and the FSC has begun that journey to improve the social infrastructure of the industries it serves, by having taken the steps uh, of developing uh, a code of conduct uh, in the face of mounting pressure that the industry must take steps itself uh, to uh, improve its performance because if it doesn't act first, uh, others will. Um, and a code of conduct uh, is one way of getting that uh, into play. Uh, it can operate, obviously, in the absence of or in complement to uh, formal uh, uh, regulation. Um, the debate, though, as to whether there should be a code of conduct, I think, is well and truly over. Uh, it's now inherent and enshrined in membership of the FSC, uh, and uh, I, for one, applaud the steps that have been taken to achieve that uh, on the part of the FSC uh, board. Uh, I was certainly uh, very uh, attracted to the prospect of being uh, able to lead the uh, Code Disciplinary Committee because of the commitment that had been made at board level uh, to ensure uh, that best practice uh, was enshrined in that code. Why have a disciplinary committee? Well, the, the basic proposition is that without some uh, ability to sanction uh, behaviour which is not consistent with a code of conduct, the code is just window dressing. We, though, as a committee, don't see this as entirely a uh, one-way street. We see elements of carrot and stick in the way in which the code uh, needs to be implemented and our committee will operate. And so there's an educative function and also the function capable of sanctioning uh, behaviour which is judged to be a significant or a material breach uh, of code standards. The objective of the code really is to raise confidence uh, about the industry amongst three key groups of stakeholders. The first, obviously, are the members of the organisation. The second are the consumers who uh, deal with those members. And the third is the regulator uh, in the picture uh, for the industry. Self-governance 
um, and self-discipline uh, by members is only going to be acceptable if every one of those stakeholder groups uh, is satisfied that the process is working well. Uh, if any one of them uh, finds that it's not, uh, then something will have to change. Uh, in, in terms of the way in which the code uh, operates, uh, it's essentially enshrining uh, ethical standards uh, and the way in which the committee deals with uh, supposed or complained of breaches of those uh, really has to satisfy each of these st stakeholder groups uh, that proceedings are fair, they're transparent, and they'll be dealt with effectively and uh, efficiently. How will the Code Disciplinary Committee work? Well, to begin with, um, I make the point that we've got a team of people uh, who bring to bear on the committee uh, expertise from both within and outside the industry. Uh, I think there's been um, uh, a propensity on the part of some people to say, well, this code committee, are they any good? What do they know about our industry? What are they going to do, to do uh, in terms of responding to the realities of our industry? We are not just a bunch of pointy-headed lawyers. Uh, we have people who uh, certainly have significant uh, uh, legal background, uh, and we also have people with a great deal of experience within the industry. So the first thing is uh, there's expertise both from within and outside the industry. Secondly, there's a commitment on the part of every member of our panel uh, to fair and due process. I think in every instance where uh, you begin down the track uh, of uh, uh, imposing expectations and then being prepared to sanction where those uh, expectations are not met, there is an understandable concern uh, to avoid uh, anything like a kangaroo court, uh, anything that is going to bring to bear undue um, uh, results without uh, fair and due process. And every one of us on the panel is committed to making sure uh, that that fairness and due process uh, is at the heart of what we, uh, what we do. Just speaking about the panel, we've got a credible and committed panel. As I said, I've uh, mentioned the, uh, the, the members who are here today. Uh, we are going to be focusing, uh, in terms of the terms of reference that we've been given by the Council, on real issues of material uh, departure from expected standards. Um, I've mentioned in the slide competitive sideshows, and that's there for a particular purpose. There's been a great deal of concern, I think, expressed that the code and recourse to the disciplinary committee may be used for anti-competitive purposes, that one member might be prepared to dob another in to the uh, uh, code disciplinary committee for competitive advantage. We're very alert to the need to ensure that there is genuine process, that we focus on the real issues, and that we don't become bogged down or become uh, a proxy for that sort of uh, activity. What are the rules of the game going to be? Firstly, we want to make sure that recourse to the committee is accessible and easy to follow. Um, you can't have uh, this type of uh, process undertaken if it is bogged down in difficult procedure. Uh, and so accessibility and ease of um, use of the procedure is at, right at the top of our agenda. Secondly, natural justice and rights of response are going to be extremely important. Everybody, uh, when they are coming into a new regime like this, will be concerned that uh, they want to avoid being railroaded. We want to avoid that too, and uh, we're confident that we will be able to develop processes and procedures that ensure natural justice and rights of response at every stage of the work that we do. Speaking of those stages, we're not talking about everything necessarily having to go to a full-blown hearing. Uh, 
there will be intermediary steps which allow uh, responses to uh, 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 alleged code violations uh, to be undertaken without necessarily having to go to a full hearing. And we're in the process of working with the FSC uh, management team uh, to develop guides, forms, and procedures uh, that will uh, reflect the points that I've just made. The, uh, the, the need to get meat on the bones of the way in which this committee works is well and truly understood and is being given the urgency uh, that it requires. I'm told that I now have 37, uh, 30, for, I've got a few seconds left. Um, and so uh, on that note, I will thank you for having listened so patiently. Uh, and uh, uh, as I say, I will be prepared, I think, to answer some questions later in the day if people have them. Very happy to uh, do that and also to have any other members of the committee um, uh, field questions for you. Thanks for your time and thanks for listening.